Hello and welcome to another incredible episode of Adventures in Entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship. <laughs> I'm your host, Jared. This is your your captain and singer, apparently again, oh, Clay yeah. Clark. And we're here to help you navigate the tricky waters of entrepreneurship. Again, we're still uh, we're still working through our way through the book uh, "Hit the Ground Running" by Jason Jennings. And uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, simplify everything. Well, um, this week I had a gentleman that has just been helping me a lot. Dave Berlin, if you're watching this, I love you. Callie, if you're married to Dave Berlin, and you are, I thank you. <laughs> but uh, here's the deal. Dave was in the military, and uh, he's in the Marines, and he's like, hey, man, just so you know, in the Marines, you know, things blow up if there's mistakes, you know? We have a photography business, video, DJ, and, and different things, and there's a certain grace to certain areas. The day of someone's wedding, there's very little grace. If something happens wrong, I mean, you, you got to get it right. But I'm talking about, there is some nuanced grace you can have in the office. You can make some mistakes and things don't blow up. But it, on the wed day of the wedding, they blow up. And he's saying, you got to flatten the hierarchy. you got to let it be known that you're here, other dudes here, these people are here, here's some reports to here. You know, you need to have just a series of direct reports, and those direct reports all need to have like, specific things they have to do every day, and things will happen. Otherwise, you're always going to wonder, why aren't the thank you cards here, and why doesn't this guy know that? And it'll just freak you out, you know? And uh, um, I read Jack Welch's book, Winning, which is a phenomenal management book, but it assumes that your hierarchy is already established. You know what I'm saying? So I've read 21 Laws of Leadership, but he's not like... Hey, bro town, make sure you set up a hierarchy. I mean, no one in these books say that mm -hmm. stuff, you know? So they just assume you have a hierarchy. And you don't. And there's not really a lot of books about how to build a hierarchy. So now that's kind of my new thing I'm looking for, is how to do that. But what I'm finding through that, as it ties into this, is simplicity is the most important thing. The less things I have to follow up with you on a daily basis, the better. So example, if I said, did you hit your daily sales objectives? You know, as far as your number of calls, your call time, your missed appointments, your appointments kept. That's a better conversation than, tell me about your day, let me see this, let me see that, let me see this, let me see that, let me that. It's better to have a hierarchy where you have people that report to you, it's nice and clean, as opposed to this crazy Venn diagram that involves slopes and swooping this and that, and you can't grasp it. And um, I wanted to do it in a rare turn of events. I wanted to ask you the questions because I know that um, you had the opportunity to work underneath one of uh, Tulsa's leading auto uh, detail companies for a while. Um, and then also, it's more specifically, you've worked underneath um, one of the largest churches mm -hmm. in, the, in the country yeah. and, and uh, with, with Church on the Move. And I think you've got a chance to witness um, simplicity. That's the big thing. Church on the Move is a complicated church with 20,000 people all doing different things, 75,000 people attending their holiday services, craziness. And yet, it's simplicity. People always know where to go, what time it is. It's very, the messages are clean. So I'm going to ask you here specifically, when they plan and they go into to projects and they approach things, how important is simplicity at the church? How often is that talked about? How, how important is that to the way they approach design, hierarchy, planning, everything? You know, I'm not so sure. Um, I, I remember hearing it talked about a few times, but honestly, I think Pastor had done such a great job of just building that into the culture yeah. there that you just knew you just knew that mm -hmm. over time of being there, you you see it, you feel it, just like you said. Yeah. You've never worked there, but yet you can tell that this is how they operate. And actually, one thing I do remember uh, is the Kiss principle: keep mm -hmm. it simple, stupid. Um, and that uh, anytime you you make things too complex, like you were saying, there's these swirly lines and a Venn diagram and yada yada yada, it gets so confusing and you don't know what to do. Yeah. Whereas at the church, you knew where your your hierarchy went. I knew that when I was working in the varsity, the young adult department at the church, uh, Coach Cruz was my boss, Pastor Kevin was his boss, Pastor George was his boss. There was so, no question there. So let's check this out. Let's do a couple examples. You're, you're a guy, go, you know, you, you volunteered, you and your wife, you know, over the holidays. You're letting people in the church, you know, greeting them, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, what were you supposed to do? And how did you know what to do? And who did you have to report to? We get an email once a week from, uh, we volunteer in the children's department, and so we would get emails from them uh, that told us where they need us. We told them what services we could work. And then we get emails that say, here's where we need you. Report How long is this that time. Uh, they, It's actually not very long at all. And in fact, they use a website. It's called Online Planning Center. 
-hmm. And it basically, when they send me it, there's like three buttons I can click. Either I accept to work the service, I decline, and I cannot work the service. And I can't remember what the other one is. Maybe it's just two. Well, I just was asking it because, you know, I do a lot of business coaching. And I feel like half the time, I was working with a guy the other day who's been phenomenally successful um, in, in the area of, of his expertise there. And he has, he just trying to hear him explain his ideas. Mm -hmm. You could literally be in the room with him for an hour and not know what he's talking about. There's so many ideas and sub-ideas and rabbit trail ideas. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to communicate. If you're trying to communicate like 100 ideas, none of them get communicated. Absolutely. So you've got to tell your customer, what's the main problem you solve? And then here's the supporting information for that. Instead of like, here's 50 ideas I can do. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important that it's it, it, as an entrepreneur that you're very clear about keeping your marketing message simple. Keeping your, uh, you know, if you train your employees and you give them like, there's 23 things you need to remember. We've got 17 core values and 23 sub values and eight promises we keep and two mottos to remember. I mean, it ends up being, what? Mm -hmm. But if you look at, um, you know, Apple uh, would be an example right now. I think Apple's like the ultimate kings of simplicity. Yeah. But, you know, you, like, if you give like an iPad or an iPhone to like an eight year old, they can figure it out, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but you give like uh, some of the phones, like my Blackberry, it takes a while for, to figure it out. I'm a, I'm a real genius. You know, no, really. I mean, it takes a while to figure stuff out. Yeah, yeah. And it's the simplicity that people like about the mm -hmm. iPhone. It does all these complicated things, but it doesn't require um, a new certification to operate that beast. Mm -hmm. You know. And that was one thing that Steve Jobs and I know you've read his book, and, and I would recommend that you do definitely read his book or listen to it. Um, and uh, he was a terrible human being, but the principles that he's that terrible he applied, human being. <laughs> the principles that he applied were just unbelievable. Um, but yeah, it was all about simplicity and that the user experience should be so simple that, like you said, a three-year-old, he realized that it was over in Thailand or something like that, or, or Turkey. Turkey. It's Turkey. And he realized that, um, that basically all, all young people are the same. There's, there's really no difference between young people anywhere. And so he, uh, he just, he wanted to create a product that was so simple and universal that anybody could use it. And my three-year-old nephew can get on an iPad and navigate the thing completely. Whereas my parents, who are 60 years old, they don't really know who Bill Gates or Steve Jobs is. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, so just when you're thinking through what your, what your processes are, like Clay was saying, don't have 50 ideas. Have one clear objective, one very clear DJ connection we DJ. I know a few years ago you went through and eliminated a lot of the things that you guys used to do yeah. to really get down to, as Jim Collins says in Good to Great, get down to your hedgehog concept. And really DJing is what you do best, not frozen beverage machines, not dance floors. You DJ and you guys are amazing DJs. Yeah. And so the, find that one thing that you are just super, super solid at or, and make sure, that, and, and even if you've got several things like Steve Jobs did with the iPad, iPhone, iCloud, MacBook, MacBook Pro, all the different things he did, he still had a very clear objective and everybody knew what it was. And you can tell what it was without even reading his book. And then when you read his book, you're just like, oh, this makes so much more sense. Homework for everybody watching this, do you get a chance to go into Chipotle or Genghis Grill? Chipotle or Genghis Grill, either one of those places, walk in there and notice simplicity at work. Mm -hmm. Complicated system, making lots of money, all sorts of neat marketing, but at the end of the day, how simple is it to understand what to do, where to go, what your options are? Awesome. I'd throw another one in there for those of you that are out of town, In-N-Out Burger. Oh! Um, that's another great one. That When you walk into Chipotle or In-N-Out Burger, um, there's not a lot of options. It's awesome. Yeah. You walk in and at in and out, there are four things, a single burger, double, triple, or quadruple. And same thing at Chipotle. It's very, very simple. Chicken, beef, or pork. It's that simple. Well, I just want to leave you, I guess, with uh, um, one thing to kind of marinate on is right now I'm finishing up my website, the updated site for Make Your Life Epic, just finishing off some nuances. And I'm challenging myself with this because at the end of the day what I do is I do speaking for entrepreneurship, you know, events, uh, you know, speaking for basically business professionals, and I do business coaching. I help people grow their companies and help them, you know, build duplicatable and scalable businesses. That's what I do. So, how do you, how do you communicate that? How do you keep it simple? I would just encourage you to do that. I'm challenging myself that way. I challenge myself with all the businesses. Epic Photography, we've been working so hard to clean up our idea. And basically what we decide is, is it's your style, your story, Epic Photography. That's what it is. 
And it took us freaking forever trying to communicate this with paragraphs and sentences and big documents. But now we've got it down to your style, your story, and it's working better. Brides get it, I get it, and uh, somebody keeps texting me. Awesome persistence. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel. Uh, you can always email Clay directly, clay at makeyourlifeepic.com. Uh, we'll see you next time.